This episode is brought to you by Leo Bato and Associates, ang realtor na pato. We're very timid as a as a culture, as a nation. You know, we 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 know what we want, but sometimes it's hard to express ourselves because we don't want to offend people to the point that we will sacrifice how we feel and let it eat us inside right. and not be whole but keep doing what what's expected what, you know just to keep the peace and all that but what you're saying is making me think yeah what peace are we keeping right Every, your testimonial right now is like I mean now you're 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 whole there's peace and and all that. What was the process like? Because there was a there was a dip in your life. Of course, Margaret was there. Your your son was there. Right. But what was the turning point in in your life to for you to say enough is enough. This is it. I am claiming what's mine. Right. I, I want to know what the trigger, what the switch was and how it got to that. Well, I came out of, I mean, I'd, I'd been through Gina's Jazz while well, I was a pretty decadent human being, done everything you might expect a person in my position to do. Right. You know, been treated like a god, didn't believe it a second of it, thought it was all bullshit anyway, but went along with it. Came out of that, fell back on my feet, uh, still removed... I'd lost something, you know, big. And that, you had big, the doubt in, big, inside, yeah. Big. So it must have taken a couple of years, but after I met my wife, then we had our first son, Oliver, which was the most beautiful experience of my entire life. I swear to God, watching the birth, you know. I just felt everything, the, the whole wreck was about her and the, that experience, you know, um, of my mm. children, you know. I come, my parents are very loving. I mean, I come from a large fam, large Catholic family. So my father rubbed off on me and definitely my mum too. So I love children. I absolutely adore them. So I came with that experience and uh, I'd met a new guitar player and uh, we sat down. What kind of record do we want to make? We wrote the record in probably two weeks. We it probably a week. And this was played. a record that you liked. Oh, I loved it. Because it, it, it proved to me, because even when I was with my brother, Gina Jezebel, he used to accuse me of thinking I was Oh, this, what are you, fucking Bob Dylan? Because they just wanted sweet and meek and t- hot and tot, you know. But I wanted to be, you know, you know I was, we, just have a little more depth, you know. A little more interesting, you know. Who's going to be interesting? Shouldn't, shouldn't every song have something of interest, something about you, you know. So, um, but, so suddenly I was free. I'd met Triple X and a guitar player named Mick Rossi from a band called Slaughter and the Dogs. Great acoustic player, great little writer, and we just wrote a little record together and uh, just flew, you know, the lyrics, the melodies, everything just flew. It was magical. So it was, we had nothing, but it's probably the happiest period of my entire life, you know. Oh, wow. Being true to yourself. But then I came out of that, so then I just felt, I felt empowered, you know. So. That empowerment. I just knew that I had, I had, they were wrong. I had talent, ha. you know. They were wrong, and all I had was jealousy. I could see, you know, it's not my fault. I was always the funniest guy and always got the girl. I'm sorry. I apologize for that, you know. So. <laughs> I'm looking at your wife, no, just kidding. <laughs> okay, so now, here's Michael Aston. He could have gone with Michael Aston. Why, why? I did go with Michael Aston. Right. Did go. Did go. My brother came, wanted to reform Genius Jazzball. I went on the Why Me tour. It was a very short tour. Right. We got to New York. He was staying with some rich guy, um, which we stayed in because our budget was zero, mm. which didn't bother me in the fucking slightest, by the way. We played New York, got great reviews, <laughs> great reviews of the record. We played Boston, and then we're in Boston. He asked me, we should be back together because his fucking life had fallen apart, you know. Um, despite what they or he will tell you, he was nowhere. 
just leave it on the sofa. And this was after your journey of oh, my journey. I was, right. I was, I was on top of the world. Yeah, but he's my twin brother. Right. Fought for him. Always, we come from the same place. Yes. The same fucking womb. So, I said, yeah, I thought we were great together too. You know, but this time we'll do it this way. So we did the demos, did that. Uh, they'd made some headway in Portugal with their my my without my um, uh, input so they had some success in Portugal we played there and the same shit went down couldn't work with them anymore went on made another record Edith Grove another great record people around me believed in me had a great budget it was a great fucking record Jay wants to form the band again so what do I do he's my twin fucking brother sure same thing happens times three 97 but the he wants to put the band back together and i did it this time too i was ready to do it too so put the band back together go on tour he uh, the tour is doing great meet this guy he wants to make a record the guy uh, taylor ropes who's since committed suicide massive gene of the jazzball fan said will you make a record we said yes and jay begged me on his hands and his knees to let the old guys come back in and through the, my, mute, the, the mutiny guys the mutiny guys oh. and through my enlightenment which was not an enlightenment i said yes it was the biggest mistake of my life because a more enlightened man would have said no mm. fuck you rotten hell you motherfuckers and my brother did exactly the same thing again but worse broke my fucking ribs sued me lost the lawsuit and spent over 20 years slandering me and rewriting the history of Gene Loves Jazz well. So there's no forgiveness. And worse, they've made terrible, terrible music since one crap record in 20 odd years. And it's shit. Even their fans tell them that. But bad, bad people, you know. So, but I'm back to where my sublime period, my enlightenment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here I am with another guy writing another record. It will be me, it will be Michael Aston, who will be nothing. When, in fact, after this interview, if anyone ever asks me about them or that past, I'll say, done. I'm done for that. Thank who, you. Who? That's dead. Died 20 years ago, 30 years ago. What did Margaret say when, when number three happened? She, well, I don't want to say what she said because uh, in, in, in only in as much as you're not being terribly wise, you know. So, and you know what? It's nice though to have to have a good woman beside you. Right. As my father said to me when is uh, when I was eighteen, you only need one good thing in life. I said, "What, Dad?" He said, "A good woman." Amen. So, which is true. <laughs> it is true. 